You're very welcome back to the final part of the six o'clock show where Chef Adrian is in charge of your Friday night dinner and we're having Spanish paella. Paella, yeah, Yay. exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to show you, it's like literally everything in one pan and it's simple. Like, it's not difficult to make. I love one, one, pa one pan, one yeah, pot one dishes pan. are the best. Yeah, you throw it all in the one dish. So you know. into your pan. If you have a nice paella pan, absolutely use it. If you don't, you can just use a regular frying pan like I am as mm -hmm. well. Uh, we're going to go in with some rapeseed oil into the pan, like so. And then we're just going to start everything in here. So you have it in there. To be oven? You're not using the oven. No, it's not oven. No, oven. it's okay. not oven. No, it's no. all on the hob. Okay. It's all on the hob. So, so basically, I've chopped up a uh, chicken fillet with the bone in, but you could use chicken thighs if you like either. And we're going to start in this pan by like sealing everything off. So we're trying to get like as much color onto, say, your chicken as much as possible. So you're going to start on skin side down. You can use chicken thighs if you like, or you could use the chicken breast on the bone. And then I have a little bit of chorizo which I've chopped. So I just removed the skin off the chorizo, if it has the skin on it, uh -huh. and then I've just literally chopped it up as well. And it'll release its oil and flavor into this. Now this is not traditional. A lot of Spanish people will kill me right, for putting okay. chorizo in, but I love it in it. You're Spanish and screaming smoky. at the telly in Spanish. We can't understand you. <laughs> but, but be sure to use Google Translate and send your complaints directly to Adrian via his website or his... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I love it. This is not. This no, is uh, so it, I suppose the idea of paella is that like they want to create this thing called the cucarat, is what they call it, okay. underneath the paella, which is the crispy crispiness underneath. Mm -hmm. So by like sweating off and creating as much colour at this stage, this is the key to the kind of flavour profile of it. So I'm going to add, and you can add loads of veggies and stuff. I'm going to go with basics here. So I have half an onion, which I'm just going to slice up. And that goes straight in on top of that. So that adds more flavor to the bottom of it. And then we have two cloves of garlic, which I'm just going to chop really roughly as well, OK? That's not rough chopping. That is perfect chopping. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I don't know about that, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, try it as best as you can. Uh, in you go with your, your garlic in as well, OK? So you have the two in. And the idea is color, as much color, as much flavor as possible as well. Now, to season it as well. So you need a little bit of salt in here at this stage. The chorizo will season, but you want to season the chicken. So just go around, sea salt on there, and seal it all in. And then you're going to turn up the heat as much as you can. Oh, get as much. the chorizo is already smelling gorgeous. It's Good, isn't up it? there. So look, see the color already? Yeah. So you're looking for that color and try and get as much as you can. Um, sometimes they like sweat down the vegetables so they're really, really soft. And then when you get to that stage, it normally takes about five, 10 minutes. When you get to that stage, then you carry on then with the cooking process. So once we get, say we're five, 10 minutes down the line and this is all sweated down and it's lovely and colorful. But you don't have that time now, yeah? We don't have that time now. We go in then with some smoked paprika or you could use hot paprika or whatever you like as well yourself. So you go in with it and it's just kind of another layer of color. A good shake. It. Yeah, a good, a good lot in there. And then again, same thing. Get a spoon in, or like a wooden spoon, and sweat that down. And get as much colour into that as possible as well. So you're like releasing the flavour off the spice. Mm -hmm. Next thing is tomato puree. So we're going to go in with it. So just about a tablespoon worth of tomato puree in there. And the same thing again. There's nothing worse than when you add tomato puree to something and you get the, lovely, the little grains of uh, tomato through it. So the best thing to do is, again, on the bottom of the pan, stir it around and it just removes any of the grain, any of the lumps and kind of okay. brings the flavour profile back na naturally itself in there. So you've got a nice colour. Now we always forget this, if you can get in the supermarket, if you can get paella rice, absolutely use paella rice. If you can't, you can use aborio or carnaloni, which is the uh, risotto rice, okay. which work great for this. Uh, so what I have, I have a boreal rice. Again, Spanish people are probably roaring at you now. Yeah, absolutely. This, this, yeah. Is, this is an Irish paella. And, uh, this normally is like putting, a, uh, putting um, pineapple on a, on a pizza. So, <laughs> the same to <laughs> um, So normally they say about uh, a boreal rice or risotto is you continuously stir a risotto. Yeah. But with this, you don't really touch it once you add the stock to it. So what we do is, I'm adding about 250 grams of the, the rice, rice to this. Dry. Just, just in dry like this and what you do is you toast the rice so you want to toast this and darken this as much as you can the traditional paella you can get um, I've had it in Valencia before you can get which is with black rice basically which is delicious so it's like a, a kind of black grain rice they okay. add to it uh, it's really really good but they toast it and if you go to say the, like little individual communities they have like 
uh, outings throughout the year where they make a huge pan of paella in like the uh, the square, uh -huh. uh, which is really really cool. If you're ever in uh, Valencia, it's worth having a, a look see. Um, so toast the rice, and it's the same as risotto. You'd normally toast the rice before you add any liquid or any stock or anything like that. And what we do then. So I've just chicken stock. It's about 750 ml of chicken stock, and we add it straight in. Once the rice is toasted and you've got nice colour and everything Throw in there. Throw that on, yeah. It, now, this, yeah, take a bit longer than, than you're doing, because you're the, showing us each step. Yeah, go on. Exactly. Now, the, the, uh, I couldn't get it today. I've, I went around Asia market. I went everywhere to try and find it. Saffron uh, is like one of the key ingredients to paella, the traditional paella. Uh -huh. um, what you would do is you'd make a little envelope uh, so saffron is one of the world's most expensive yeah. uh, uh, spices. You'd make a little envelope out of tin foil and toast the saffron, and you'd add it in at this stage. Then, as okay. well, toasting the saffron releases the perfume and gives it a lovely flavour to the paella. If you can't have it, just leave it out, like I have today. I couldn't get my hands on it today okay. for some reason. It, it, you're just as well because we're nearly running out of time. Anyway, you, no. you can look up a YouTube video of how to toast your saffron. If you <laughs> so what I do is I literally lid on, or like if you can, a little bit of tin foil, uh -huh. cover it. Uh, and leave it for 15 minutes. Don't stir it at all. And then before uh, you finish, all right, so 15 minutes, remove the tin foil, add your mussels, which I've scrubbed. So just make sure you scrub your mussels. Uh -huh. And then for five minutes, leave it on a, a, like a medium heat. They're not going in long at all then? No, no they're, they're not. They're and then there you go. And Have a look. Once they, oh my goodness. Look at that. Okay. You look at that. And then you have a sprinkling of parsley. Yeah. And then you let people kind of choose. I like a little bit of lemon juice, but let people choose if they want. And what I was talking about at the start was the kukurat, the underneath where it sticks slightly and it's yeah. crispy. That's the key Give to it. Give it plenty of time and, it, and yeah, yeah. it's all soaked up and well, it's not. All in, yeah. like that recipe should take you 35, 40 minutes all in. And not a lot of hassle either. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can find out the, the recipe. That's the traditional Irish paella now there for you. <laughs> Find uh, the, the website or find the details and the recipe on our website. Just do a search for VMTV. It looks fantastic. We'll dig into that. That's nearly all we have time for for tonight. But first, over to you, Gronia. Thanks, Ray. So this evening, vigils have been held across the country in memory of school teacher Ashling Murphy. Only 23 years of age, Ashling was just out for a run on a sunny January afternoon and never made it home. We would like to send our thoughts and condolences to Ashling's family, friends and colleagues. And as we all struggle to find the words to process the events of the last few days, we've asked poet Jan Brereton to read her piece, Safe Today Stop Take, a vivid reminder of what daily life is like for women in Ireland. Jan, over to you. Safety Stock Take. Before I leave for home, I conduct a safety stock take, an inventory of sorts for my own well-being sake. My phone is hidden deep, but it's always close to hand. My keys are in my fist as I'm walking up the strand. I check left and right and left again. I zigzag up the road, avoiding who I think I should, a peculiar safe cross code. Each step I take is speedy. My bag is slung real tight. I changed my shoes before I left, in case I got a fright. Nearly there, I text you quick. I take a slower pace. Relax my grip and take a breath. I've won the safety race. <laughs> 